The country had some natural resources, not many. There was salt, the main sort of the famous salt mine in Vielitschka, which is still existing and, and there's something of a museum there. And of course oil, which made Austro-Hungary for a short time before the First World War, the third largest oil producing country in the world after the United States and Russia. The most important oil fields were in the region of Dorobich and Borislav, and the oil industry became a symbol for the process of modernization. But at the same time, the terrible conditions in the oil fields, especially in the early stage of its development of the oil industry, the exploitation of the workers, mostly day laborers, many of them Ukrainian, in the beginning also many of them Jewish, interestingly enough, uh, <coughs> aroused the interest of radical socialists and Polish and Ukrainian writers. On, so on the one hand, the oil boom sparked hopes for the rapid development of the region, which was therefore called proudly Galician Pennsylvania or Galician California or even El Dorado. But on the other hand, the conditions in which the mostly unskilled workers <coughs> Uh, had to spend their waking and sleeping hours were so harsh, unhealthy, and often dangerous that the same region was also called Galician hell. So the Ukrainian writer Ivan Franko, of course a revolutionary spirit born in this region near Dorobich, he presents in his Borislav cycle a dark, very dark picture of this Galician hell Though some scholars point out that his descriptions may have been realistic, but they were not real. That's what uh, Jaroslav Hrytsak writes about Franco, and he, know, he should know, because I mean, he wrote this beautiful biography of his. The best known stories from the cycle, of course, are Boa Constrictor and Borislav Smitsa. Borislav is laughing. Polish writers also dealt with the topic and there's one book I'm going to mention here, Piekle Galicijskim, in Galician Hell, uh, was in its time very widely read by the Polish author Józef Rogosz, 1844 to 1896, published in 1896 in the year when he died. Rogosz criticizes the conditions, the working conditions, but he also criticizes very much the Jewish oil magnates as he as he calls them. Uh, and of course, Rogosh is writing a spirit of, you could almost say, rabid Polish nationalism, depicting Jews and Ukrainians as the main adversaries. Galicia was blessed with fertile land, even black earth. Uh, but at the same time, it was not really able during the whole existence to feed its inhabitants. There was overpopulation combined with backward agricultural techniques, small land holdings, mostly smaller than five hectares. Uh, they led to endemic catastrophes, famine, hunger catastrophes, which year after year supposedly, supposedly caused many thousand deaths among the rural population. That's at least what contemporary writers claim. Now, modern history is not so sure about this. And this, again, makes a part of the Galician myth. Uh, one of these writers who claims that Galicia really is to be associated with misery is, of course, the Polish industrialist Stanislaw Szczepanowski with his famous work Nenza Galicji w Cyfrach Program Energicznego Rozwoju Gospodarstwa Krajowego, Galicia's Poverty in Numbers, a program for the energetic development of the national economy, published 1888 in Lviv, which played a very important role in fu fueling this conception or this myth Modern economists point out that the reality was not as dark as might be believed when we read Stepanovsky's or other books. But Stepanovsky was not the only one to point out that Galicia was really 
the poor house and Galicia would, uh, synonymous with, with misery. It's also Ivan Franco. When you read Ivan Franco, uh, I want to mention here that Ivan Franco was also a brilliant uh, publicist in German. His German is absolutely brilliant, and you still read it with great pleasure. He's uh, contributing a lot of articles to Viennese and also German magazines and newspapers. And he was really a brilliant writer, also in German. He also wrote, of course, in Polish, so he was really three-lingual. Uh, and in one of his, his articles, he mentions the years of hunger in Galicia, 1847, 1849, 1855, 1865, 76, and 89. And of course, the small peasants were the ones hit hardest by such disasters, while the large, mostly Polish landowners did not very much to improve the situation. 